during the talk today you told that Estonia would uh, pledge to do everything what Estonia can for Ukraine. What do you mean by that? Well, we're a small country. We don't have the financial resources to do everything. Uh, I mean, we're 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 out of Afghanistan, and so but we can we we have the facility. Some Ukrainian soldiers have already come to Estonia, and uh, there will be more coming for rehabilitation. You know, people have lost limbs and so forth. Uh, we are already working right now on uh, e-government in a number of uh, cities in. Um, this debt that just started in May or uh, May, I guess, uh, which is certainly one of the key things to uh, uh, for transparency. I mean, I, I mean, the reason why we're where we are on the transparency international list comes. From, you know, so, what kind of the things of reforms coming from this on experience could be done and would be priority here, mentioning the countries still in the war? Well, as I said, I think it's very difficult to do too much when you're in war. I mean, you're just—it's a different form of. Uh, I mean, it's, you know, this, uh, remember the uh, Talking Head, so you're too young to remember the Talking Head song, Life in Wartime, but anyway, I mean, transparency is, I think, the priority for when it comes to corruption. Uh, making the country function is also something that we've done using uh, e-governance. President Obama, U.S. President, came to Estonia, met you, and there was a summit in Wales. But what is the maximum uh, support uh, both Estonia, it's different, and also Ukraine can uh, expect from NATO, which is realistic? Well, I mean, they're very different. We're members in the hardest parts. You do more than your share, or you do at least your expected share. Then, obviously, you get, uh, when things get more difficult, they actually also pay more attention to you. So, so I mean, what we're getting, we're, we got out of something that was very good for us. Now, for as far as Ukraine, I think Ukraine got about as much as it could get as a non-member or non-ally. Uh, and that's one reason to work toward becoming an ally. Um, and do you expect, do you anticipate Russian intervention? Where? In Estonia. No. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that uh, Russians in Estonia would like to have, instead of free movement of labor anywhere in Europe, free movement of labor to Tambov Oblast? I don't think so. And uh, what would be what you do with the uh, the security officer which is detained in Russia? I mean, we're we're trying to get him released because after all, he was involved in a criminal investigation of cross-border smuggling, and on Estonian territory. I mean, it is an outrageous act to go and kidnap someone. Um, but anyway, that's where. Uh, I mean, we are we are in the process of talking to them. Why do you think Vladimir Putin has decided to do this silly thing now? What, what, is it Obama visiting? Is it? Uh, I have I have no idea. I really. I mean, it it just it just sort of is flabbergasting. But. You're flabbergasted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but I mean, do you think this presages? something bigger, there's sort of speculation that after Ukraine the Baltics could be next. If That's not, all crap. It's all crap. If not militarily then, you know, with m more provocations of this kind. Well, we would certainly hope not. Do you think the security guarantees for NATO are real if put to the test? Absolutely. Because the point is that if they were not, then the, the entire alliance would collapse. Because if there's any doubt in the validity of any, uh, in, in the validity of Article 5, it will collapse. You don't think that Vladimir Putin might be tempted to kind of test that in, in the coming months and years? I think it would be a very foolish thing to do. Well, what I actually said was it's Europe's responsibility to look after the security of the of, of Europe now that all of the agreements have collapsed. Yeah, so how and do we do that? What, 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 what well, I would say we have to start to... talking about it because right now what we talk about uh, in Europe is what we must do right now to stop uh, Russian actions in Ukraine. Yeah. But the larger issue of, um, sec of security with the disappearance and the uh, nullification of the Helsinki Final Act, uh, among other things, uh, we're in, uh, we're, we, have a, we have a big task in front of us. Right, and, and, and it, but it, at this stage, the uh, the building blocks can be put in place for that immediately. I mean, can we can we are there things that we need to be doing now to create a sort of temporary architecture to 
to fill that void? Well, I, no, I, I think that we don't have any consensus on that yet. I mean, if you look at the sanctions discussions, that uh, really n not all countries are willing to, uh, to proceed. Um, I think there is agreement within NATO uh, that, uh, uh, that we need to really uh, make sure that all of NATO is defended. That's quite clear. But the larger issue of what is the security architecture of Europe with, for those countries that are not in NATO, what is the security architecture for really the what is called today the OSC, OSCE space is an issue that must be discussed. And do, you, do you think history will look back on this year as a turning point for Europe? Or? Well, I called it the Annus Horribilis, uh, I mean, which was Lady Thatcher's statement about her. Yeah, but I mean, since say 89 was the Annus Mirabilis, yeah, then yeah. this is the Annus Horribilis.